All right, good morning. We're getting ready to begin our Sunday school and our singing. Um, <clears throat> I want to encourage everyone, the day's beginning. Hopefully, you've been working on your memory verses, and I just wanted to add something that you can do <clears throat> for memory verses. I've got these little green booklets over here, and these are scripture memory booklets. And um, there's actually several different colors of booklets that deal with different subjects. So there was a little red one years ago I had and I memorized through, <clears throat> and it was called the, the Soul Winner's Treasure Path, and it was all the verses dealt with evangelizing and witnessing. And this green one is called Overcoming Temptations. Okay. Does anybody here have a desire to overcome temptation? Okay, so what this booklet will do is it's basically taken and categorized um, in a set of five verses. So each page has got five verses and you memorize it and it'll deal with <clears throat> a particular thing. Um, overcome lustful temptations, lessons from a thief, covetousness, overcoming covetousness, um, Paul, our example, crowns, temptations of Joseph, all different things. And it'll, it'll basically work you through verses that would be very helpful to you in your journey to have a pure mind and to overcome your temptations. So the nice thing about this is that you can stick it in your pocket and you can carry it around. And you can open up to the page that you're working on and um, you know go through it. It's easier to keep than sometimes you know a piece of paper, we, we lose it, I lose it a lot easier. So if you would like one of these booklets um, to work on towards your scripture memory, you can get it from Tracy McCormick, right? And we just like to put your name because it's all the same color booklet. So we're gonna put your name on the front and record that you have it, it's free. Um, and hopefully it'll just help you on the path of memorizing. I know I've probably not said enough about the scripture memory lately, <clears throat> But memorizing the Word of God is one of the most important things that you'll do as a believer is to get God's Word and to hide it in your heart. It's, the Word of God is powerful. The Spirit of God uses the Word of God. And the Word of God is living. It's alive. It is God's communication to us. And the more of God's Word that you have in your heart and in your mind, the sweeter and more clear the communication between you and God can become. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll begin singing some scripture songs. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you, God, for the privilege of opening up our eyes today and being alive on this earth. We acknowledge, Lord, that every single day is a gift. And this day is a gift. You gave it to us. I pray, Lord, that we would appreciate and hold dear the fact that we live today. I would ask and pray, Lord, that you would fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit. Pray that we would walk with you today. I pray that our assembly, our gathering together today, would give glory to you. We claim your promise, Lord, that when we assemble together, that you will be in our midst. Lord, we do not want you on the outside of our congregation knocking and calling for entrance. We pray, Lord, that you will be seated at the head of the family today. We would ask, Lord, that you would speak and that you would give us ears to hear. And we pray that the Spirit of God will work through all of us today and work in this assembly. Lord, we pray today for those of our church family that are away from us, our brothers that are down in Mexico, um, the Rootsy family that's uh, traveling on vacation, uh, Brother David and Salve and those that have gone over to Idaho, I ask that you would be with each of them uh, today, that they'll find sweet fellowship in the churches where they are. And for those that are here, Lord, we just ask and pray for the ministry of God's spirit and God's power to be in this place. We love you so much, Lord. It is a joy to be able to lift our voices and sing to you. Bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, well, let's take your, you've got your sheets in front of you. The first one is Psalms 27.4. On that next page is Psalms 1914. This is a really good verse to keep in your mind throughout the day. I mean, a lot of them are, but this one it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And um, yeah, it really just helps keep your heart and your mouth in check just throughout the day with whatever you're thinking or saying. Last one is Second Peter three eighteen. that one <laughs> all right psalm 17 <clears throat> psalm 17 uh, during the sunday school hour turn me on just a titch please during the sunday school hour we've been talking about prayer brother Savi's um, taught the last couple of weeks he's in idaho today uh, with brother david as well and so I want to I want to continue on the subject of prayer. And I, if you could put a prayer request before God today, like if you could categorize of all the things that you're praying for, like the things that you if if you had one prayer, the most significant prayer that God could answer, like what would that prayer be? Uh, I don't want you to vocalize it yet. Um, there are things that we pray for more earnestly than other things, correct? 
Like there are, there are things that are in our heart that weigh heavier than other things. And the things that weigh heavier, we tend to talk to God more about them. Well, sometimes we just worry about them. And we forget we haven't even talked to God about them. <clears throat> but this, this psalm was a blessing to me this week. Um, and it, it dealt, it starts off dealing very specifically with prayer. And I want to work through Psalm 17 this morning. And when I, when I meditated on this psalm, I, it helped me remember the thing that I crave the most. I really crave the most, that I, that I want the most, that I desire the most. And I think it's a right desire. I think God wants us to desire this. So, Psalm 17. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. So, you know, the word feigned means something that's um, made up. If you feign something, we don't really use that word today. We would probably use uh, the word fake. Right, fake. And I think when we deal with prayer, we're wanting, to get, we're wanting to get beyond things that are fake and to get to something that's, that's genuine, something that's authentic, something that's real. Is it, uh, can you, ex give me an example of what um, feigned prayer might be? Prayer that's not genuine, prayer that's not authentic, prayer that's kind of fake. Joe? When we pray for our food, sometimes we just say thank you for the food. Often you actually eat it. Well, let's just hit the bull right on the, on the head. Yeah. We had dinner last night, and we were asking if we're pre-chip or post-chip uh, prayer. You pray before the chips or after the chips, before the main meal, whatever it might be. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes it's, it's just a ritual. It's just the thing to do. Get Ron? So what would that, what would that be like when you say half-heartedness? Oh, okay, half-heartedness. Um, sometimes we're asking God, but we're not actually sincerely asking and waiting on God because God is our plan A, and we've got other backups, so if, if God doesn't, okay. What, what else would be kind of feigned? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Oh, thank you, Mike Man. Thank you. Yeah. The, that's the I'm not the sinner, you know, this, you know. Okay. When we're doing it for everybody else but not God, it's being mm -hmm. flowery and just uh -huh. praying to go, mm -hmm. I'm praying. <laughs> yep. There, there's no doubt that people tend to, well, one, we fear a lot of times public prayer, like we're afraid of public prayer because we're suddenly aware that everybody else is listening to what we're praying, and sometimes we're more careful about what we say, more careful about how we say it, and oftentimes the audience of public prayer is not God, it's the people that are listening. Okay, what else might be the idea of feigned prayer? Yep, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Repetitious prayer? So it's just the tradition of this is mm -hmm. what I say exactly all the time, and mm -hmm. I'm just going through the motions, but am I actually yeah. mm -hmm. pray, like thanking God for it? Yep. Repetitious prayer. Didn't the Bible say beware of vain repetition? Right. And we, we do it all the time. I mean, um, we, we don't practice um, praying pre-recorded prayers, but if you listen to yourself pray, uh, you've, you might have your own repetitious words that you say, Right? Because you're filling up time with words. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Vain. What, what else would be vain? Okay. Yeah. 
So we can, we, you know, public prayers. You know, a lot of times, you know, like she was saying, you can you can pray to to please others to you know sound you know more intellectual or, or spiritual. But then there's also praying to them so they are more convicted. You're really you're trying. You're like praying to the crowd. That's a pet peeve of mine. You know, where you're trying to you're really you're not praying to God. You're just you know preaching another a second sermon. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> yep, the the sermon prayers. Right? Let me hide my sermon. Hey, just stay up front, buddy. That'll be easier. Okay, thank you. You can just stay up front. It'll be easier. Um, that's okay. I wouldn't want to be either. I'd rather be in the back too. But but yes, we we call those preaching prayers. And believe it or not, I've heard I've heard pastors justify the preaching prayers. Uh, let me get to a place, and I'll I can I can dig a point in my in my closing prayer. Okay. What else? What else might be a, a vein? Okay, over here. I think um, kind of along the lines of somebody, I think it was Ron, that um, when you pray and your heart, or I think maybe Drew hit it on it too, like somebody asks you to pray, if you're not right with God and they ask you to pray, you should bow out like um, I can't right now or whatever instead of because then it's a vain prayer because mm -hmm. you know that your communication isn't open with God mm -hmm. and you're just doing it. Okay. Obligation. Yeah. Praying out of obligation. Okay. All right. True. What else? What else would be kind of feigned, feigned prayer? Yep. I was going to say, like, talking, uh, Brother Save has been talking about being honest with God, but we're also kind of afraid for God to be honest with us, hoping yep. to hear our answer from God, mm -hmm. rather. So you kind of have that, you come into that with that presupposition that God will have our answer and that will speak to us, our answer mm -hmm. to us. And that's kind of always the hope when going into the prayer, yep. is that I'm praying for God's will, but I hope that God will actually just answer me according to my will. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that made any sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Mm hmm That makes very much sense. Okay, anybody else? That's really good. Feigned. Catherine? Oh, okay. Well, the video that um, Mr. Harder showed us about the um, guy saying thank you a zillion times, that was really vain. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, whatever it was, exactly. Holy, 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 yeah, holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, uh, up here in front, Catherine. <clears throat> Probably when your mind's in a completely different place, like you're praying, but like you're thinking about, oh, this food's going to be so good, and mm -hmm. it's going to taste amazing, and then you're, but you're praying, and you're not really into the prayer at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, prayer filling up time, and you, but your mind and your thoughts aren't really there, but you know you need to do it, so you just do it. Okay. Anybody else? That's good. Feigned. Okay, well, you keep, keep the mic with you because we'll, <clears throat> we'll interact um, a little bit more. So David starts this psalm out um, to God, asking God to hear the right, O Lord, attend to my cry, give ear unto my prayer, that goeth not out of feigned lips. David had assessed himself... I mean, it's, you need to do self-assessment. It's very easy to assess him and her and them. Part of getting real is about assessing yourself, assessing you. Now, verse number two, he says, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Now, in the context of Psalm 17, David is going to talk about, in um, verse number 9, 10, and 11, he's going to talk about the wicked compassing about. Uh, David is in some sort of uh, problem, in some sort of trouble, and he's going to ask God to do something about it. So he's 
But then he says to the Lord, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. So what is a sentence? Like if, if you go into a court, all, all the evidence is given, correct? At a court, prosecutor, defense, but then the judge gives the verdict. The judge gives the sentence. So prayer is not about you or me. It's not about us twisting God's arm for him to do something. Lord, would you please work? Well, one of my favorite all-time statements of Pastor Mala in Fiji is, uh, God's always working. Right? You, you don't have to ask God to work. It's his nature. Jesus said, my father worketh, and hitherto I work. So, so God is always involved. But at the end of the day, prayer out of unfeigned lips means, God, I'm seeking your sentence. I'm not trying to get you to do something that I want you to do. And maybe you've done this, you've been desperate about something, and then you have pleaded with God to let it happen, and maybe you've even bargained with God, like, God, if you'll just do this one thing, then I will, and then you name it, like it's some trading off um, and bargaining. And I want to tell you, not a whole lot of Christians pray, God, whatever your sentence is is we are great fakers like this whole idea of feigned and real fictitious i've heard all kinds of people talk about god's will and god has not led them god has not spoken to them god has not guided them they have convinced themselves into something and then they pray to god at, but god's not taught god's not led god's not spoken right we know the words like we're good at words we we professional christians we're good at words Right? Even when we pray, our Heavenly Father, you know, we're just good at that. He is our Heavenly Father. There's nothing wrong with calling Him our Heavenly Father. But you know what I'm saying? We're good at words. We're good at statements. We're, we're good at the show. We're, we're good at making everything sound the way it's supposed to sound. Let my sentence come forth from thine presence. Let thine eyes behold things that are equal. Now, verse 3. Verse 3. Thou hast proved mine what? Heart. I think Brother Savi was talking about truth on the inward parts, the inward, the, the inner man. You see, the thing about the heart, um, the, the true status of the heart cannot ever fully be known by anybody but God. It is also true that is what is in your heart will leak out. Right? So if, if, if you are um, an angry person, it'll, it'll, it'll leak out. If you're a jealous person, if you're a bitter person, if you're a lustful person, if you're this or that, like we can try to conceal all that in the heart and never let it show up on the outer man, because that's where fake things happen, is on the outer man, putting on the right face, putting on the right demeanor, speaking in the right tone, doing all that stuff, like, right. But, but God, yeah, <laughs> I'm a great, fa hey, I just want you to know, if you call me at two in the morning, you're going to hear the best fake you've ever heard, because <clears throat> you call some people, you, if you wake them up, how do they answer the phone? <sighs> like, and I try to make you, if you got to wake me up, I'm like, hello, did I wake you? Nope, I've been awake just hoping you would call me at three in the morning. Right? <clears throat> so if you want to hear me fake, call me at like two in the morning and I just, <laughs> that's how my voice works. Sorry, Kate, don't choke on that. <laughs> we are most... Listen carefully to this. We are most fearful of people digging into our heart. We build walls to keep people out. 
and we build walls to keep God out. And I know that sounds crazy. Why would you build a wall to keep God out of a place that God already is? Like God's already there. There's no secrets. There's no secrets with God. But we are secret keepers. By the way, to just say, you don't have to tell everybody everything that's in your heart. Right? That's also not the plan and the will of God. That I mean, there are some things in my heart and mind that God has dealt with that are in the past and they're under the blood and they're dealt with and gone that don't need to be just like, let me give everybody a litany of my whole existence and everything. But it is far easier to fix external things. It's far easier. We do it to our kids. Okay, our kids have a bad attitude. And then we say to them, change that look on your face. You're not going to walk around with that pouty face. Have you ever seen a child try to fix a pouty face when their heart is still pouty? It's like nigh impossible, but you're going to do it. Put a smile on that face. You know? And we know the difference between a countenance on someone's face that came out of their heart and one that they're just putting on display. But it, it is far easier for me to push everybody away by just making everything look okay and sound okay. And, and be, because of this, we're, we're great con artists. Christians are great con artists because we can convince everybody. And, and, and that's why what, sometimes when people fall off the deep end and we're like, I just can't believe. Yeah, because we're so good at not being real about the things that are in our heart. But the one that you need to be really honest and open with is God. When he talked about unfeigned prayer, genuine, real prayer, he then says, God, you have proved my heart. Now, David will write another psalm, Psalm 139. Psalm 139, fantastic psalm of prayer. And that prayer starts off with David saying, Thou hast searched me and known me. He admits, he acknowledges, God, thou knowest my uprising, thou knowest my downsitting, thou knowest my thoughts afar off. Even before the word comes into my tongue, you already know it. There's no place I can go that you're not there. There's no hiding place, not in the, out in the uttermost parts of the sea. There's, there's no hiding place over there. God, you're everywhere. You know everything. You knew me in my mother's womb when the first cells were building me together. You framed me according to your book that you had written. You designed me. There's nothing you don't know. And then the end of Psalm 139, David then says, Search me, O God, and know me. And I've mentioned this probably before, but I remember as a young Christian reading that, going, why in the world would David take that whole psalm to explain how much God knows about every single possible minuscule detail of his life, that nothing's hidden, and then he says, God, search me and know me. But why, why would you ask God to search what he already knows? So, you know, David wasn't, David wasn't saying, God, go on a fact-finding mission and see if you can discover what's in here. No. Mm -mm. David gets into that psalm and says, God, because I know that there is absolutely nothing that you don't know, would you please take me on a journey and show me what is in my heart what is in my thoughts. You don't even know your own heart. The heart is deceitful above what? All things and desperately wicked. Sorry to say it, 
your heart is a deceiver. And your heart lies to you more than anybody else. It is deceitful and it is desperately wicked and it will not want you to believe that about it. Your heart would like you to think it's pure, motives are right, convince you of all that kind of stuff. But your heart's deceitful, and the Bible says, he that trusteth, is another proverb, he that trusteth in his own heart is a what? It's, you're a fool. Like your heart is not trustworthy. God is trustworthy. Your heart's not trustworthy. God is trustworthy. Your thoughts are not trustworthy. God is. And so when David said, Search me, O God, and know my thoughts, my heart, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Let me tell you, it, it, it's very hard to pray that prayer with feigned lips. Because we just don't want God to go there. Because if you pray that prayer with unfeigned lips, you might get dismantled. You might get dismantled. For the Spirit of the living God to walk you down a journey of what's really in your heart, it, it can be extremely painful, but it's always healing. God never wounds just so you can experience pain, ever. But God is nigh to them that are of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. A broken heart is a sacrifice well-pleasing to God. And believe me, the real breaking of your heart, the real crushing of your heart will not be done by man. It will be done by God. God will go in to the inner sanctum of your inner being and he will search you out. And he will talk to you about you. And those faithful are the wounds of a friend, the Bible says. And Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And because the Lord loves you, he will wound you by being truthful with you about what is going on in your inner man. And I've lost a lot of you already because you're like, don't want to go there. Don't even want to go there. Most people would like to just live in the fairy tale that they've created. They'd like to live in the illusions that they have built up. They would just like to live convincing themselves that everything's okay and I'm okay. Let's just keep living this illusion. Let's just keep faking it. Let's just keep pretending. Let me just get through life and... Um, Let's not go deep. Let's not go real. And I want to tell you something beautiful. I don't have to dig into your life. This is the beauty of it. I don't have to dig. And nobody has to dig into your life. Probably along the way, God will bring people into your life that will be part of this journey with you. Just, just to tell you honestly, God will bring people into your life that will be part of this journey with you, and it will be people who won't lie to you. We love those people who lie to us. We love them. Tell me I'm okay. Okay, when you were kids, when, when did you not like somebody? When they were honest with you. The Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. An enemy who doesn't actually care about you will kiss you when they should have wounded you. Like they'll, they'll tell you what you want to hear, not the things that are, that are truthful. If you want to be real, like you want to be a real Christian, you want the real power of God, you want the real experience with God, God has a spirit that works in you, and guess what he's called? The spirit of what? The truth. 
the spirit of the truth. Ooh, truth can be scary. Truth can be scary. But you should not be scared to, to deal with truth with God. Because nobody loves you, nobody cares about you deeper than God does. He loves you. When he walks with you through the journey of dealing with what's in your heart, he will deal as a truest friend that you will ever have. He will be with you and won't forsake you through that process. Thou hast proved my heart, verse 3, Thou hast visited me in the night. Hmm. In the night. Some of our darkest things happen in the night. Right? You know who you get to deal with the most at night? It's yourself. I was talking with my kids. We were having devotions on this uh, chapter uh, one of the days this week. And any, any, of your, any kids in here ever get growing pains? Growing pains. Am, am I, yeah. Aren't they lovely? Yeah. In, your, in your legs. All right. When do you feel growing pains? At night. At sleep. You wake up at night. That's when those growing pains happen. Do you, do you think that those legs weren't growing in the day? No, they were. But why is it that you feel it when you lay down to go to sleep? You're more still? You're more quiet? You're not distracted? Mm -hmm. If you get a paper cut in your thumb, guess when you will really start to feel that paper cut? I have put my kids to bed so many times and then they wake up with something hurting. Like they'll just be down for a few minutes and this hurts, that hurts. I'm like, okay, wait, like five minutes ago, you were playing and doing everything and none of it hurt. Why does it suddenly hurt now that you're laying down in bed? Because you get distracted by life and you don't, you don't focus on the pain, you don't focus on the thing, and then when you lay down, okay? How many of you have wanted to lay down you're so tired, like you're tired, you're like, I just need to go to bed. And then you lay down in bed and you, just, you can't go to sleep. Yeah. Why? Because it's when you're not distracted with everything else. Then you get to start hearing what's going on inside your mind and going on inside of your heart. All right. this, this is when the real you gets to talk. And a lot of times we don't like what's going on inside of our mind, what's going on inside of our heart. You do understand the reason why people would like to have a few drinks at the end of the night before they go to bed. Because then it can just put them to sleep and they don't have to deal with the things that they're thinking about. They don't have to deal with the things going on inside of their heart and mind. Okay? But let me tell you, God knows what he's doing. There's, there are several verses about God visiting us in the night. Now, we've got all kinds of distractions that, that they didn't have back in Bible days. Like, they couldn't put a movie on. Because that's the way, that's for some, that's how you don't have to think about what's going on in your mind. Just put a movie on and then fall asleep. Right, you can bypass that long thinking and dealing with what's going on inside of your, of your heart and mind. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Man, I say, what? God, you can try me and will find nothing. Now, that may seem impossible. That feels impossible to me, for God to try my heart and find nothing, because I feel like I say, God, can you speak to me? And he finds stuff. But how do, how do you get to that point 
where God can try you and find nothing. And I'll tell you, that does not happen with people who are not genuine seekers of God. Because when you are a genuine seeker of God and you're willing to hear anything God has to say to you, uh, it's going to be a painful mess, but God's going to deal with things. God's going to deal with things. God's going to walk you through things. God's going to cleanse things inside your heart. God is going to reveal things and show you things, and you're going to be able to repent and get cleansing and get victory and get honesty and get integrity and get purity. And it's actually possible that you can get to a point in your life where there aren't things undealt with in your heart. There aren't things still covered. There aren't things that you're going to still be shocked by that God has to speak to you in your own heart. So when it starts with unfeigned prayer, like as a beginning point, are you willing to hear from God anything God has to say to you about you? I learned this <laughs> very early in my Christian life. I prayed a prayer like, Lord, is there anything in my heart that you need to speak to me about? And if you're honest about that, then God talks to you, like fast. Like it starts fast, because there's some, there's some pretty obvious things that aren't very deep about you if you're listening to God. And it's like, are we done with that, Lord? Is there anything else? And the Lord deals with some of those pretty easy surface things right up front, and then He goes down deep. Now, I'm going to skip right to the last verse. David, there's some, we might, we might revisit this chapter. But you get down to the end of this and listen how David ends this psalm. He said, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. So what do you need to satisfy you. This will feed into, because we're going to John 4 this morning about the woman at the well. If, if something could be changed in your life right now, that you could finally go, ah, I'm satisfied. What would it be? Because if you're honest, you're grabbing for things. You're grabbing for things. You could, you could be grabbing for temporal things. You could be grabbing for religious things. You could be grabbing for, for all kinds of things. And this is what David said. This will be my satisfaction, David said. When I awake, see, I'm beholding your face in righteousness. I'm beholding God. I'm beholding the face of God. And I'm letting that righteous God prove me and what's in my heart and to try me. I am purpose that I won't sin. I'm purpose that there'll be purity. And he said, when I awake and I notice within me thy likeness, I will be satisfied. It's not, it's not about what I can get. It's not about what I can do. It's that God Almighty Himself has worked in me and transformed what's in the inner man so that my heart is like the heart of God. That my thoughts... See, there's a lot of verses that say our heart is wicked and deceitful and this, but did you know that that's a statement of what the heart is, but that's not a statement of how that heart has to stay. We are told to love God with a pure heart fervently. Blessed are the pure in heart. He desires truth on the inward man. So you don't get to, you're not supposed to spend the rest of your life saying, well, you know what, the heart's deceitful and the heart's ungodly and the heart's this, as some sort of justification for your heart to stay that way. 
you know, without God, without the Spirit of the living God, yes, there's no hope for that heart. You can't change it, but it can be changed. It can be changed by the grace of Almighty God, but never without truth. We have a very merciful God. You will, you will understand this because when, when you... When you do get confronted by God about things that are in your heart, things that you don't want to hear, sometimes it'll make you feel like you'll, you'll be overwhelmed sometimes with a feeling of um, unworthiness, shame. The Bible says that mercy and truth are met together. When you deal in truth with God, mercy is always there. This is our God. He delights in mercy. God, it, the revelation of things in your heart can be very painful because we've lied to ourselves for too long. We've faked things for too long. We've pretended things for too long. We've given excuses for things for too long. We don't want to own anything. Like, we, 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 don't, we don't want to... Um, I'm not saying never, but a lot of times we don't want to. Like, I'd like to just not think that that was wicked. I'd like to think you had something to do with it, or the world had something to do with it, or you're right, soften the blow a little bit. Like, Lord, give me some way to put some blame for how I am on somebody else. Surely someone has to share some responsibility, you know, for this. I just don't, I just don't want to own the fact that this is me. So when you deal honestly with God, it does come with a, a blow. What did Nathan say to David? Thou art the man. Sometimes this is the way that God deals. Um, being fake is hard work. Propping up in your own mind things that are not true and propping up to other people things that are not true, it's really hard work. It's hard to veil the inner things, right? When you are able to go through the process of being real with God, it's also painful, but it's not hard. It's painful, but it's not hard because God is gentle. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is healing. Guess what God heals? God doesn't heal fake stuff. God heals broken hearts. He heals them. God heals them pours in that balm of Gilead, and he heals. And there's a lot of healing. There's a lot of powerful things that God can do on the inner man when we deal with truth. And this should be, when you end up with verse number 15, my thought, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't, I don't have to search very hard for me right now to say, there are things in me right now that are not in the likeness of God. There, there are things in me right now that I don't fully grasp and understand that I need God to deal truly with me, truth on the inward man. We should not fear the work of God in our heart. Don't fear it. Embrace it. Can you imagine a, an individual life, a family, a church family, where we were going through this process genuinely together? Um, changes, prayer requests, we have more important things, and this goes back to the big toe prayer. Sorry, Catherine, I'm praying that this doesn't affect you again this week. 
But, but do, do you understand that when we talk about praying with unfeigned lips, when the only things we can think to pray about are people's health conditions? I'm not saying we don't care about people's health conditions and we don't pray about it. But it's shallow. It's, it's surface. It's, it's external. We're not going deep enough with God in the things that we seek and the things that we pray for. So my, my request for me, for you, for all of us, let's go here. Like, let's, let's go here. You say, who do I need to talk to? Hey. Um, remember we talked about on Wednesday night? We're going through Hebrews, that New Testament. How does that New Testament work? The Spirit of the living God writes His laws where? On the fleshly tables of the heart. And that chapter said you won't need someone to teach you. Why? Because every man will be taught of who? Will be taught of God. Yes, God will use able ministers of the New Testament, but the real writing, the real work of God is done by the Holy Spirit of God. And if you could close your mouth long enough and just let God's Holy Spirit talk, He will. He will. He'll begin. And you may need counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Right, there, there is time to, for others to get involved in this journey with you, but I promise you this. Nobody, nobody who can counsel you, nobody who can advise you, nobody who can preach to you, nobody who can teach you, nobody on planet Earth is going to take you where your heart on the inner man is not first desperately willing to go no matter what that process may be. I've tried I've tried to talk to people, counsel people, advise people who actually don't want to hear anything at all. And so have you. You've, we've, all, we've all been through that. It's a waste of time. I don't want to be that way. Okay, let's, let's just commit this one to uh, prayer. Dear Father, as I mention these words, Lord, and as, as we hear these words, I know, God, that there can be with us a lot of fear. We've been hurt by people who knew truth about us. We have been wounded in the wrong way when people got a hold of truth, and so, Lord, being honest and being willing to be opened up into our very innermost being is so scary. And I pray, Spirit of God, for those in this room who might be very fearful of this process, I pray that you, by your Spirit, would give them assurance that you are a great, gentle, loving God and that as they begin to peel back the layers of their heart and as you tear down, tear down false constructs in their heart I pray Lord that they would experience your love and your graciousness throughout this process I pray Lord that we as brothers and sisters would not be pharisaical when we see the Lord taking someone through this journey Lord, may we not do what we do so easily, which is be more concerned with how things appear on the outside than how the journey is going on the inside. I pray, Lord, that we would be a people filled with truth and holiness and God. God, you right now know where I am, and you know where every person is in our assembly, and those listening, you know, God, right where we are. And Lord, you're the creator of the universe. Why do we fear this? 
Lord, you gave your life for us. We should not fear this. And I pray, Spirit of God, that you would take us on this journey of getting to this pure heart. Um, I love you so much, Lord. And I am grateful. I really am, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll break for a few minutes and then we'll gather.